Hi, this is Gary Brinkman, Pioneer Agronomist in Central Michigan. Today I'd like to visit with you about the case of the missing plants, assessing corn stand establishment. When seed is placed in the soil, the processes of life begin anew. First, the seed starts to imbibe or absorb soil moisture. The temperature of that soil moisture absorbed by the seed can be critical in determining the number of plants that emerge and the uniformity of emergence. Here's what normal germination should look like. Let me first start by setting some ground rules. Number one, growth. Growth is the evidence of life. If you see new growth, that means there is still life in that plant. Number two, all below ground plant tissue should be firm and generally healthy white. Dark discoloration indicates root rot or insect feeding that may have damaged the roots. Now to the process. When diagnosing below ground plant tissue, it's important to know the order in which plant parts develop. So first, the radical root emerges first near the tip of the kernel within two to three days in warm soils or much longer if soil temperatures remain less than 50 degrees. In cooler or drier soils, the radical root may not emerge until one or two weeks after planting. Second, the coleoptile, often called the spike, emerges next within one to several days of the appearance of the radical, again, depending on soil temperatures. And third, the seminal roots emerge next and initially elongate towards the dent end of the kernel. These three structures start the race out of the ground. If anything happens to the radical, coleoptile, or seminal roots, like insect feeding or disease, the plant may be a runt and the field may exhibit uneven emergence. After 110 to 120 growing degree units, the coleoptile should push through the, through the soil, which allows the embryonic leaves to push into the light and start growth. In warm soils, this process can take six to seven days. In cold soils, less than 50 degrees, this process may take 20 to 35 days. So walk with me now as I try to figure out why there are slow growing and or missing plants in this field. The case of the missing plants. Here are the facts. The planting date was April 18th which is all too early for central Michigan. Plant uniformity was good, but there were enough skips for some concern. The field pattern. Every 30 to 40 feet, there were roughly two plants in a row showing slow emergence. I could lay the spade down in this 20 inch row field, and it generally equaled six healthy plants across most areas. As I said, about every 30 to 40 feet, there were generally two plants next to each other, as indicated by the red line, that were slow to emerge or not emerged at all. Why were these seeds coming up so much slower or not at all? The first possibility that goes through every grower's mind in cases like this, did you sell me bad seed? Well, think about it. The pattern wasn't right. The planter couldn't sort all the bad seed in two foot sections. It would be much more random across the field. Besides, most of the seed was emerging. Some was just coming up slower than others. The second possibility, uneven planting depth. This field was plowed. There was little residue to interfere with the planter. The soil tilt was ideal. Seeds appeared to be planted consistently at two inch depth. The third possibility was that insects like grubs, seed corn maggot, or wireworm, those would be the primary below ground insects that would reduce my stand in Michigan. So there really wasn't any sign of insect damage by grubs. That would indicate feeding on the roots. There was no sign of insect damage by seed corn maggot. They would damage the embryo and potentially stop germination before the coleoptile development. And there was no sign of insect damage by wireworm. 
they would bore into the seed and or the coleoptile. While the pattern is that which could be left by insects, that is, one to two foot skips, there was no evidence that insects were playing much of a role in causing slow emergence in this field. A fourth possibility was disease. Let's consider the facts again. Planting date was April 18th, followed by colder temperatures, colder weather. I visited the field at the end of May, so the, so the seed that was still emerging had been in the ground for over 40 days. The efficacy of a seed treatment fungicide is 10 to 14 days. That means the seed was naked without protection from the fungicide for almost 20 to 30 days. All this was starting to point to the fact that these seedlings could be suffering from seedling disease. As I dug into the soil to examine the roots, here's what I found. Soil conditions for these seeds were outstanding. Notice that there was no sidewall compaction. However, the roots were not in good shape. Notice the dark discoloration of the radical root on the stunted plants. There should have been robust white root system growing rapidly in this loose, tilthy soil. As I continued to dig, it was clear that the roots of the stunted plants were not healthy. It was helpful to dig a healthy plant to make some visual comparisons. My observations were the following. The two plants on the left were side by side in the field and looked like potential runts and or skips. This is a very common occurrence where disease and or insect issues usually impact two to three plants in a row. The emergence of these seeds was delayed by the total lack of roots as a result of seedling diseases. These plants had been in the ground for over 40 days, far beyond the life of the fungicide. The plant on the right had a robust radical and seminal roots, as was typical of most of the plants that had emerged more timely. These pictures clearly demonstrate the absolute importance of the radical and seminal roots in achieving uniform emergence. If anything happens to the radical, that plant is set back and may lose the emergence race and become a runt. This picture also clearly demonstrates that each plant grows in its own microenvironment with different moisture, different temperature, and different stress levels leading to field patterns such as we see here. In summary, if soil temperatures are cold, seed could remain in the soil for 25 to 35 days before it emerges. Number two, rapid emergence is important as seed treatment fungicides generally protect the seed for only 10 to 14 days. Number three, slow emerging seed is prone to greater disease and insect damage. Number four, growers should expect higher mortality when seed remains in the ground for extended periods of time. Number five, early planting is really important in striving for top yields. And number six, Maximum yields are usually associated with rapid uniform emergence when planted in warmer soil temperatures. Thanks for joining me on this adventure. Remember, look for growth, as growth is the only evidence of life. This has been Gary Brinkman, Pioneer Agronomist. Have a great day. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.